Uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present this work. Oh, sorry. So uh, I'm Shomi Ghosh. Uh, so the, the, I will be talking about scaling of Fox Tech propagator across many body localization transition. So this is a joint work with Jagannath Shutradhar from ISC, and uh, these are the uh, collaborators uh, in this work. So when we talk about localization, we uh, we uh, normally think of a uh, exponentially localized wave function where the wave function uh, the wave functional amplitude decays exponentially around some point so this can be achieved by a simple model like this which was proposed by anderson so this is a simple tight binding model with uh, random on site disorders and for a very small uh, st uh, strength of the disorder uh, this uh, the eigenstates of the hamiltonian are extended that means uh, this uh, wave function are extended to the whole system whole finite system. On the other hand, for very strong disorder, the wave functions are exponentially localized. So to quantify this extent of the wave function, one quantity of interest is inverse participation ratio. So uh, this is defined like this. So this chi n i has some non-zero non value only at some finite sites i, which makes uh, uh, IPR of uh, uh, finite in the localized phase. On the other hand, in a delocalized phase, this chi n i is uh, have non-zero value everywhere. So IPR scales as one over L and goes to zero as system size increases. So one interesting property of uh, localization is that it can preserve the memory. So since these are exponentially uh, uh, localized eigenstates, no two eigenstates, I mean, there is not much overlap between different eigenstates. So if we have some initial uh, particle distribution, local particle distribution. So these particles cannot diffuse uh, as there is no overlap between eigenstates and the memory of the initial condition will persist for a long time. So naturally then the question arises is what happens in presence of, in presence of interaction? So it was shown that uh, it has been uh, for quite some time, time, it has been shown that, that um, there is no thermalization uh, uh, for a very strong disorder in, even in presence of interaction in one dimension. So the memory of this local initial condition still is preserved. So how, so this kind of localized states are called many body localized states. Uh, however, there are few differences between Anderson localization and many body localization. We'll be focusing mostly on this aspect that uh, where Anderson localization is uh, known to be exponentially localized, many body localization, uh, in many body localization, the eigenstates doesn't have this exponentially localized form. On the other hand, it, it has been shown uh, by many work, uh, it has been argued to have a non ergodic extended eigenstate. So what I mean, mean by non ergodic eigenstates is that uh, the wave function occupies some L to the power D number of sites, where L is the number of sites available in the system. So where this D is some less than one. So basically as the system size increases, L to the power D increases, that means the wave function occupies more and more, eigen, uh, more, and more uh, sites. So this is somewhat kind of uh, delocalization or extended maze of the wave function. Uh, although if we, come, if we think of the fraction of the sites that is occupied by the wave function, which is L to the power D minus one. So this goes to zero. So in the thermodynamic limit, this kind of wave function actually occupy a zero fraction of the system size, uh, I mean, la number of sites available. So uh, this is the problem, this is uh, termed the non-ergodic extended uh, eigenstates. So this is our model of interest. So this is a known uh, model for MBL, where there is this simple uh, no nearest neighbor hopper. So this is a one dimensional uh, chain, open boundary. Uh, nearest neighbor hopping, there is uh, on-site random potential and then this nearest neighbor interaction. So, uh, and uh, this model for this particular parameter is known to have a thermal MBL transition at uh, some critical value of this W disorder strength, which is around 3.7 to 4. So, and in uh, choice of basis, natural choice of basis for writing this Hamiltonian out in uh, down in in case of many body system is the basis is this kind of basis state, which is the Fox space basis state or, or the occupation number basis states, which is just the sequence of the occupation numbers of all these sites. So, for example, here I show a system size system of size L uh, size eight, and I have say I am at half filling. So I have four particles. So an example of a basis state I would be this where uh, these sites are occupied and others are empty. So now, uh, since uh, we have L particles and uh, say at half filling, we have a, a, sorry, L sites and at half filling L by two number of particles. So we have a basis states where the dimension of this uh, Hilbert space is L choose L by two. 
And if we write the Hamiltonian in this uh, Hilbert space, then this Hamiltonian has a nice tight binding formula kind of form where these are uh, these tij denote some hopping between basis states i and j and these epsilon i's are correlated random numbers uh, so uh, we are interested in the many body resolvent uh, specifically the finberg self energy which is the imaginary part of the local self energy extracted from the uh, diagonal part of the greens function diagonal terms of the greens function so to calculate that we use some uh, uh, broadening eta, which we, which we always choose for uh, as the mean level spacing of this many body system. So, uh, as we speak of the basis, basis uh, this box space basis, so if we arrange this box space basis in a way that, I mean, these lines actually uh, denote these hopping parameters between i and j, so then it has uh, this nice uh, layered structure where each layer is connected only to the layer just before it and after it. The only nearest neighbor layer uh, hopping is there. So uh, with this, uh, this is a very local structure. So given this local structure and the tight binding model kind of uh, form of the Hamiltonian, we use a recursive technique, which has been uh, used extensively in uh, Anderson localization problems. So uh, we use this recursive technique to calculate this G. So we use this because this is, uh, um, I mean, more efficient in terms of computational, uh, uh, I mean, computational cost. So uh, it uh, requires lesser memory, and so we can reach up to larger system sizes as say L equal to 22. Uh, so we have calculated the, the, this Feinberg self energy for different disorder parameters, and uh, we uh, were interested in this quantity, typical value of this uh, self energy. So it has been shown uh, in uh, uh, using a self-consistent mean field theory calculation that uh, delta t is finite in the thermal phase, and it is vanishingly small in the MBL phase. Uh, actually, it goes to zero as thermodynamic limit is reached, which means that this Hilbert space dimension is going to infinity. Now, uh, so actually, it turns out that the how this delta t goes to zero as nf goes to infinity is very important. So uh, we can actually extract more information about the wave function from this scaling. So in general, delta t uh, follows a scaling form of nf to the power minus one plus ds. So ds is some fractal dimension. So say for thermal phase, ds is actually one, which means that delta t is independent of system size and delta t is finite for all system sizes. On the other hand, if we are, uh, I mean, if we have nf equal to zero, which means that delta t is one by nf, which is exactly the broadening eta. So then this delta t actually proportional to eta, which is known for the, known to happen for Anderson localization cases that there in Anderson localization, this uh, delta typical uh, value of the delta goes to zero as eta. Uh, and uh, so uh, here we show that in the MBL phase, uh, uh, delta, this uh, ds is, uh, between zero to one, I mean, it's neither zero nor one, it's something in between, and it actually, uh, uh, I mean, it indicates the multifractality of this wave functions. So here we show uh, the scaling of this delta typical as a function of the Hilbert space dimension. So as expected in the for small w, when the system is in thermal phase, delta t is independent of uh, system size. On the other hand, for very, uh, I mean, for large uh, disorder, so this is the WC. I mean, uh, yeah, so this is the critical parameter of the WC and for WS and WC, it follows the scaling form like this, where we fit this power law to extract the fractal dimension DS and this is the fractal dimension that we extracted. So uh, in the MBL phase for W greater than WC after the critical parameter. So we have a DS, which is always between zero and one, which indicates the multifractality of the uh, non ergodic extended states in the MBL phase. So further, we actually do some scaling collapse uh, for this quantity delta T by delta C, where delta C is just the typical value of the um, self energy at, uh, at the disorder strength W equal to WC. So at the critical point. Uh, so we follow, uh, I mean, uh, we uh, use this uh, scaling answers for where we have some um, Fox space volume scale gamma, and uh, we uh, uh, have a scaling good collapse for that. And so when we, uh, uh, I mean, uh, so if this is already known as from the previous slides, the delta T is uh, uh, finite in the thermal phase. Also this delta C, uh, has uh, has a uh, 
power law form of nf to the power minus one minus dc where dc is just the ds at wc the value here this one so if we uh, uh, if we use this information then we uh, one can show that uh, in the asymptotic limit where this nf is much much larger than this fox space volume scale uh, this asymptot uh, this uh, functional form has uh, this uh, i mean can takes this kind of form so we have actually uh, um we have uh, drawn this uh, uh, line okay so we have drawn uh, i mean we have uh, drawn this line over here where we extract this coefficient dc 1 minus dc from here which is uh, found to be 0.5 uh, which means that dc is also around 0.5 which uh, agrees with the value of dc here so which actually uh, indicates the collapse i mean good quality of the collapse on the other hand, for the MBL phase, we uh, we uh, go for an answer where, where we with some xi, some uh, Fox Prince lens, lens scale, and we also get a collapse from there. So in the next slide, I show uh, this the the variation of this vo volume scale and the lens scale as as a function of W delta W, which is W minus WC. So in the thermal phase, this volume scale has some. Uh, essential singularity uh, near WC. On the other hand, uh, in the MBL phase, this correlation land scale diverges. Uh, so, yeah, so this is, uh, so, uh, and which is consistent with uh, uh, similar kind of uh, land scales extracted from inverse participation ratio for many very localized uh, uh, systems. Uh, so here is the summary. So the finite size scaling of delta t is associated with the Fox space volume scale, uh, volume scale gamma, which is an essential singularity at the critical point. In the MBL phase, the finite size scaling is associated with a diverging correlation length, which diverges with the power law at the transition. And the multifractality of the non-ergodic extended state in the MBL phase gets captured in the system size scaling of delta t and the fractal dimension ds changes discontinuously across the MBL transition. And uh, the fractal dimension d is uh, dimension d is at the critical point has a value which is less than one, which means that at the critical value as well, the many body phase is multi. I mean, at the at the critical point itself, it it is multifractal. And uh, thank you for your attention. So we have recently archived the paper. So this is the number. Thank you, Shomi. Thanks. Questions. Well, let me start uh, with one. So maybe you address this. So if uh, in this uh, Fox space uh, hopping Hamiltonian that you wrote, uh, if I ask for the uh, distributions of this TIG, okay, mm -hmm. is there any information that uh, uh, your analysis can uh, shed light on too? Because naively I would expect that so distribution of TIG means TI, uh, I mean, so TIG is always uh, one. On, uh, uh, so this is not a random, uh, I mean. Oh. Yeah, when you say one, you can have a denormalized. Yeah, you can have. Yeah, you can continue to normalize. Yeah, but uh, starting with you one. Right. Yes. So TIJ is actually basically determines the structure of the Fox space. Uh -huh. So whatever I mean, start. This is a minimally connected site. So it starts from there. So and it branches out like that. So and th this structure is basically determined by TIJ. And it is TIJ is equal to T. I mean, which is uh, in our case 0. 0.5 wherever there is a hopping between I and J state, and J states. So I think the point is that you know if you go to another basis which is related to this basis by a local unitary transformation, the value of ds might change, but it will remain okay in the in the ergodic phase it will still be one, but in the MBL phase it will still be between zero and one. But the value can can change. I see. Yeah, I think you had told this. And and the question you are asking, you can probably phrase it. Most crisply, if you ask what is the structure of the Hamiltonian in the basis of Anderson orbit, because then uh, in the localized phase, you will have an average net connectivity of um, 
which will scale differently uh, compared right. to the ergodic right. space. Right. Because okay. of the exponential attenuation. Yeah, it's not really good. Yeah. Okay, more questions. Yeah, so my question is that uh, in the 1D model, which you showed, um, you told that uh, after uh, you need a strong disorder to see the MBL, and you said some value around 3.7 or something. Um, but Anderson showed that if you have a long enough like 1D system, then whatever be the disorder value, you will have a, a localization, exponential localization. So how do these two things make sense? Like the wave localized, but um, it's not like, it's not, it's following volume law, but it should follow area law, right? No, actually that is true for, I mean, that is, uh... I, I, that argument comes from the scaling theory of localization, right? And, and uh, that is true for uh, Anderson localization when there is no interaction. So when there is no interaction, 1D and uh, 2D also, uh, any amount of arbitrary disorder is efficient to localize everything there. But interaction, uh, interact, in presence of interaction, I mean, although the system is uh, one dimensional, it is not exactly similar to the Anderson localization problem because of many particles and there is interaction. So there is channels to I mean, hop. I guess the, uh, his uh, argument applies only for V equal to zero, equal to zero. line. But for V, yeah. For V not equal to zero, hmm. that's, okay. More questions. Okay, if not, let's thank Shomi once more for the nice talk. And let's thank all the three uh, speakers of the session.